Phil here, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this Dire Avenger Aspect Warrior for Warhammer 40,000. Let's get started. I start nearly all my models with an airbrush pre-highlight of Media Comart White over a black undercoat, as I find this really helps me get a good sense of all the model's details, as well as starts to build up some of my highlights and volumes. As this paint, like almost everything we airbrush, is semi-transparent, I do a couple of passes to really build up my coloration to a pure white where my brightest highlights to be. Next I apply Scale 75 Mediterranean Blue over the entire model in two thin coats. The goal of this step is to fully build up opacity of the paint and get a nice vibrant blue. So it's okay if some of the contrast from the previous step is covered up here. I fix this by adding in a couple drops of Caribbean Blue to my paint cup and spraying a general zenithal highlight over the entire model. As some of y'all might know, I really don't enjoy edge highlighting as I find it tedious and boring. I generally avoid using it by using a technique such as sponge chipping to add texture and definition to my model's armor plates. With Eldar though, I don't really feel like that battle-worn and beat-up appearance is appropriate for their aesthetic, so I turn to dry brushing. For all my dry brushing, I use cheap makeup brushes that I got from the local drugstore, and in this case, I use a shorter, firmer brush to make sure I have more control over where I'm putting my paint. I lightly dry brush on Caribbean Blue over the entire model and make sure to pick out all of the edges of the armor plates. It's okay here if you get a little bit of a dusty appearance that dry brushing is known for, as we'll fix that next with some inks. Once I'm happy with the dry brushing, I mix up some blue ink and thinner in my airbrush and start to apply thin layers over the entire model. One of the challenges with inks is that they're pretty concentrated right out of the bottle, so you have to thin them down a lot when you airbrush them on. I probably thin my ink mixtures about one drop ink to 15 to 20 drops thinner, but it's not an exact science and I sometimes get them wrong. As you can see here, the first mixture was way too thin and didn't actually add any color onto the model. So I had to add a few more drops to my paint cup and spray it on again. Besides adding color and saturation to the model, I really like using inks here because they kind of even out all the paints underneath them and remove some of the contrast you see. What this means is any of the kind of chalkiness we got from the dry brushing will fade away into the background color when the inks are applied over top of it. After the inks were dry, I found that the model's edges weren't super crispy and were kind of faded away still, so I went back and re-dry brushed one more time with Caribbean Blue. This is an even lighter dry brush than before, and is really just trying to lightly pick out the edges with a pretty, well, dry brush. For the last step of the blue armor, I wanted to push the contrast a little bit deeper, so I took the same blue ink mixture I was using before, added a couple more drops of blue ink to it to get a little richer, dialed down my PSI to like 10 so I had more control over my spray pattern, and carefully sprayed this into the darkest parts of the armor, as well as a few places like the tops of the armor plates on the legs that I just thought would look more interesting with a little more contrast on them. Before moving on to the oil phase of this project, I spray the entire model with thinned down gloss varnish to lock in the inks and ensure we don't rub them off later on. The model is still missing shading at this point, and you could spend hours panel lining every single crease and recess, but I don't have time for that, so I turn to a lamp black oil wash. This wash is applied liberally over the entire model, as I'm not too concerned about darkening up the blue armor, as it's a bit bright already. For a rule of thumb though, oil washes will always slightly stain the paint underneath them, even after removing them with a makeup sponge. So if you do not want to alter the color of your model at all, you need to apply this more as a pin wash. If you're okay though with altering the color, or just lazy like me, feel free to slap this over the entire thing. As a real quick aside, I have seen so many people mention that you need to let your oils dry for like 24 hours before you can actually move on to the next stage of your project, and that's just simply not true. All you really need is to grab a hair dryer, give your model a quick blow dry until the oils are matte and dry and you can move on with your life. Now that the oils are dry and we've all moved on, I take a foam makeup remover and start to buff off the oil over the entire model. Using a dry makeup remover like this will remove most of the oil, but will still leave a thin layer behind. So next I dip my makeup remover into a little bit of clean mineral spirits and continue removing the oil from the armor. This is a pretty gentle motion and I'm really just trying to catch the edges of the armor to remove a little bit more of the oil from it. After this, I seal the model in with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. White gets a lot of crap for being a notoriously hard color to paint, but I think that most of the challenge really comes from not using the right colors to shade it, plus the poor coverage of most white paints. It's really not that difficult though, as long as you have the right tools. I started off by spraying the entire helmet with Scale 75 Bearing Blue, which is a cool blue-gray that I really like to use as the base for my whites. Opaque white is then airbrushed onto the top of the head, and I pay particular attention to the angle I am shooting this. I spray here straight down on the model, which allows the white paint to build up more, and thus provide a more intense color, 
on the top of the head, much like Light naturally would, as well as get a nice creamy blend that would take forever to get with a normal paintbrush. I'm planning on leaving the faceplate of the helmet white, but there's not quite enough definition for me between the faceplate and the rest of the helmet. So I go and spray the entire helmet with gloss varnish to start, and then do an oil pin wash just in the recesses. This is different than the oil wash before, as I want to make sure I get as little oil as possible outside of the recesses, as I don't want to stain the white of the faceplate. If you do get a little bit outside of the area you want it though, you can always go back and wipe it off with a makeup sponge. Continuing with my trend of making questionable choices for this model, I decided to paint all the little blisters on the armor as gems. This took quite a while, and I wouldn't recommend doing it if you're trying to paint quickly, but it does look pretty good. To paint the gems, I started by painting the entire thing black, and then painting the bottom half with deep red, the bottom quarter with Antares red, and about the bottom eighth with Mars orange. I then added a dot of pure white right over top of the orange and in the opposite corner of the gem from the orange to represent light glinting off of it and to give the effect of a truly reflective surface. Next up, I tackle the cloth hanging off the back of the model. I start off by applying a layer of Scale 75 Deep Red and then Antares Red to get a nice vibrant red base color. I then add a layer of Magos Purple Contrast Paint over the entire thing. It might seem a bit weird to be shading with purple here instead of red, the purple actually gives much more punch to the shadow and provides some additional hue contrast. To rebuild up the mid-tone and get a nice vibrant red again, I layer on Antares Red one more time into the middle to high points of the cloth. For the last step of the red, I use Mars Orange from Scale 75 to edge highlight. To finish off this part of the model, I paint the two strands hanging down, first with Bearing Blue and then with White by Scale 75. Moving on to the shuriken catapult, I paint the entire thing flat black and then edge highlight it with bearing blue. I prefer using blue grays here to highlight my blacks, as I find it looks a lot more interesting than using pure grays, but feel free to use something like I don't know, graphite or whatever the Games Workshop equivalent of flat boring gray is here if you want. I then also pick out a few parts of the edges with arctic blue to give a little bit of variation in my highlights so it's not one flat line across the entire weapon. All that's left now is a few small metallic areas, such as the tubing that connects the arm to the shuriken catapult, and the tubes on the head, and I paint these first with heavy metal by scale 75, and then wash them with Druchi Violet to get a nice kind of purple sheen. I like using this purple wash here as it gives this metal a kind of weirder alien vibe, which I think is appropriate for the Eldar, but you can try any color here you want. Finally, I re-highlight these metal parts with heavy metal again to pick out the tops of the ribbing and cabling. All that's left now is to attach the model to its base and it's done. If you found this video helpful, I have a lot more tips and tricks on how to paint Eldar here in my Ayanda video, including how to airbrush a power sword. Have a good one and hobby on.